Well, this one's going to be a nice, simple one. Here we have a uh, Claris, K-L-A-R-U-S um, model G20, uh, G2MC16343, uh, LED torch. Uh, I don't know what level of quality Claris make, but uh, uh, this one has uh, been treated a bit roughly, and the USB charge socket's been pushed right in, so uh, that's going to be a nice easy one. But, uh, hopefully it's easy to take apart. It's an aluminium body, all uh, fairly, fairly solid. The joys of being in lockdown and running out of things to do. Uh, let's try undo the end. Does, the end. does that open? One of these ends is going to unscrew, I think. If we grab eat both ends and twist. No, or if the body comes off the... Oh, there we go. So the body comes off the front. Here we go. And we've got uh, one... Ooh. Claris branded uh, cell. Lithium ion. Uh, 5 ampere. 5,000 milliampere. Uh, 26650. There is our PCB. How are we going to get that out? Um, maybe the maybe it unscrews. Maybe it unscrews, or maybe it just pulls out. Can I just pull it out? Nope. This feels pretty. Well fixed. Uh, I wonder if this I bet that maybe this end cap pops off. Let's see if we can unscrew the end cap. It's got uh, might be able to restrain it in those dimples with some pliers and give it a twist. Let's see. Might work. Ooh, it's turning. It's turning, but I don't know, is that supposed to turn? Like, is that how it secures? Let's keep turning a bit. There's an O-ring. You can see an O-ring there. Uh, yep, the, the gap appears to be growing, so it's definitely unscrewing. We're on the right track. It's very, very tight. There we go, started to loosen up. We have a quite a fat O-ring around the around there, so it's going to be fairly well water proof. Hmm, is there retaining screws or something? Got the LED, there's a, I can see one screw, it's got a big blob of solder on it. Well, looking a bit closer, it appears that this is all uh, molded one piece aluminium extrusion. Um, And it looks like it's probably just going to push out from this side. If we just lean on it, I wouldn't be surprised if it if they bonded this somewhat. I wonder if we apply some heat to it and then lean on it and see if it pushes out. I might just try that. It looks like it's on a bit of a metal frame. You see where that screw goes into a bit of aluminium. I don't think that aluminium there is part of the outer shell. I think that's a heat sink for the LED, which is well, a bit of a cover. Um, there's some thermal compound there. Oh, it's just sitting there. Okay, so obviously the 
top section when it screws down holds it into place so something to be aware of uh, we could actually unless I'm wrong and this piece of aluminium is one and the same Hmm. Uh, I think I'm wrong. <laughs> yep, I think that does not come away from the round outer shell. I think that is part of the outer shell, which means we're going to have to desolder the LED. Uh, and that white wire there, or that short section, it's just a ground connection or unscrew it. I think it's just on a tab. Unscrew that, desolder the LED and then the bottom section will come out. Just a tiniest amount of thermal paste there. I don't know how much heat one of these would put out, but uh, it could be worth putting a little bit more, a little bit more paste on than that, just for longevity of the poor old LED. All right, all right. excellent. Okay, I guess we will push this out from this side. Oh no, seems to be loose, looser than it was uh, now. So uh, obviously that wire, being as short as it is, would have um, held it, uh, held it up. Let's give it a bit of a push from the top. And it kind of wants to bounce back. Maybe a little even push from a couple of sides. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, a bit of a pull and a wiggle. No, something's catching. What's it catching on? I hope it's not catching on the socket that fell inside. Uh, it sounds loose. <laughs> But yeah, it looks like that's where it's possibly getting stuck on is the on-off button. Don't think this comes off. Well, maybe it does. So that should have been obvious, I suppose. This isn't part of the molding. It's just an insert and it screws in. So unscrew, unscrew that. Uh, then we've got our rubber There we go And that was sticking right down into it a bit of rubber over a solid piece of plastic that sits down in the hole And it was jamming up against here Now it should just almost fall out Like that <laughs> uh, Probably got a bunch of modes like um, Flashing and low medium high brightness There'll definitely be a charge controller, of course. In fact, maybe that's all that is. Maybe there isn't a micro. Uh, I don't know, there's more under there. Switching regulator. Cool. Well, our USB socket goes on the top board right there. So we're going to have to desolder quite a bit. We have to get that pin out of here. Um, and all of these connections along here which isn't going to be too bad that's going to be fairly straightforward so I like to freshen up the solder 
um, before wicking it off. It just seems to help it to come off a lot easier. Add a bit of flux to that to help that uh, turn the heat up a little. Oh yeah, nothing like a bit of flux. Get in there. This will certainly come off a lot easier. This appears to be um, silicon coated wire. It doesn't burn, which is really nice. Especially when you're waving around um, lengths of hot solder wick and if it happens to make contact while you're trying to get rid of it. I could take those wires right off completely. I mean, it's, it's really not a major. <laughs> I should have checked the other side. Make sure they're flat so that they slide through the gap in the PCB. this to separate. Yep. And that side, here we go. I'm only using the two outer pins, uh, so the missing one in the middle is not a problem. Clean up the old pads. Let the heat get down into it. That can be half the battle. Isopropyl is liquid gold at the moment.
doing pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's try a, uh, a, a plug in that. I'll just make sure we'll clean out all the flux first and uh, see how it goes. Seems to go in there all right. Goes all the way into the lock tabs. Excellent. We'll go with the pin first, and we we'll use the pin to stabilize the position of this board because it's uh, it's quite uh, wobbly. So we'll get that liquid and hold the board at about where we think it should be and that should stabilize that. If we have a look at that, so it will need to be fairly square so the port lines up with the um, the hole in the side of the case and I think we've got that pretty good. Everything's in its place. Looking good. Right, who remembers what order this went in? Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. Um, right, we'll put the shell on first. Um, right, so I skipped a few steps on on camera, but uh, it was just easier. Uh, as a tip, screw the um, battery holder handle back into the bottom there, and that'll hold the PCB firmly up against. Uh, the inside of the top section so that it makes it easier to get the uh, you know, solder the LED back on and so forth without it trying to hang down and fall out. Uh, so that just leaves us with the uh, button which went in solid plastic side down and uh, I'm guessing it lights up actually, it's a clear silicon and there's a hole in the middle so it's possible there's an LED on there that lights it up. So we'll just snug that down. Now I'm just using, if you wondered, uh, some pliers in the oval shape there. Uh, there's probably, a, I'm sure they made their own tool for it, you can probably 3D print a tool to be honest. but. Uh, Yep, just um, nice and snug, and and go. Um, an issue if you've got something with a, a a better fit like those, they're a little little bit too big to get each side of the of the plastic though. But it would have been a much snugger fit. So nice and gentle, um, so that it doesn't slip once it tightens up, and uh, scratch everything up. Still, this is going to be <laughs> a little hit and miss. <laughs> Pushing inwards helps to stop the stop them slipping up over the shape, and we're almost tight. Feels like it's some um, sealing against the silicon insert there. It's about as good as going to get.
And what else do we have to do? Oh, there's our USB port. How's that looking? Yeah. That could be lined up a bit better, couldn't it? What's going on there? <laughs> Bugger. Um, there we go. It's just... Yeah, I mean, it was centered on the board. It must have been very close to how it uh, was, of course. The board hasn't shifted. Now all that remains is the front cap with the LED support. Has a couple of locating pins, which I have gone and put the positive lead too close to. There we go. And then when the top screws down, that centers and holds it against the heatsink. Whoa, yellow. That looks really cool. <laughs> Okay, it's not screwing in. Hang on. Moment of truth. Although, this battery's probably flat. Because, obviously, you couldn't charge it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It didn't turn on before I opened it, so let's see if it charges. And my USB uh, ammeter handy. And the port is still lined up after screwing the battery in, so let's plug it in and see what happens. Nothing happens. This could be because the battery is likely a protected cell that's shut down. Let's check the battery voltage. Uh, let's stick it on, on the bench supply, see if I can get some charge into it. Um, because the charge controller in the torch itself may not be um, may not may not be allowing it if it can't see uh, voltage to start with. Okay, so I can force a charge into it, so we'll do that for a bit and uh, come back. Well, the battery seems to be taking a charge, so we will make sure the torch can now charge it now. So plug it in. Half an amp. There we go. And there is a red light on to show charging. Let's give this thing a whirl, see how bright it is. That's on, I guess, low, medium, high. That's not too bad. Obviously, it's the camera's self-adjusting. Super high. Yeah, you can see it flick down there. <laughs> so it was a basic repair of the charge port on a Claris G20 handheld flashlight, LED flashlight. Thanks for watching.